Hello, my name is Louise McCluskey and I am going to present this A lecture which covers structural analysis using neural code three. This presentation is broken up into three sections. So first of all we're going to go through the different type different analysis types. The next section section will deal with imperfections. In the third section I will go through an example which is from the Access Steel website. So this is the first section on analysis types. Structural analysis is covered in section 5 of AN 1993 part 1-1 and there are five subparts. So the clauses that we will be looking at in this A lecture are clauses 5.2 and 5.3. Clause 5.2 is about global analysis and there are four types of global analysis that are possible. This clause explains how second order analysis should be conducted. Clause 5.3 is about imperfections and we'll go into more detail about imperfections later on in the presentation. So there are four types of global analysis. First order elastic for initial geometry and fully linear material behavior. Second order elastic for deformed geometry and fully linear material behavior. First order plastic for initial geometry and non-linear material behavior. And second order plastic for deformed geometry and non-linear material behavior. Elastic methods can be used in all cases, but the plastic methods may only be used for cases in which the material and the cross sections satisfy specific requirements and second order theory may be used in all cases and first order theory can be used for non sweat frames or sweat frames where indirect allowances for second order effects are made. You can see the load, def the load deformation responses for the different types of analysis in this diagram. Clause 511 covers structural modelling and basic assumptions. It outlines the fundamentals and basic assumptions relating to the modelling of structures and joints. It states that the chosen model must be appropriate and must accurately reflect the structural behaviour for the limit state under consideration. Clause 5.1.2 deals with joint modelling and it tells us that the effects of the behaviour of the joints may generally be neglected except where the effects are significant, for example when using semi-continuous joints. And Euro code 3 recognises the same three types of joint. In terms of their effect on the behavior as the on the behavior as the frame structure as BS59 5950 part 1. So at the bottom here's a diagram showing you the different types of joint. So a simple joint, a semi-continuous joint and a rigid joint. So here's a flowchart showing you when we should account for the behavior of the effects of joints. So for simple i.e. pinned and continuous i.e. rigid joints we can neglect the effects because they are not significant. But for semi-continuous joints, we will need to consider effects as they are, they are significant. For most design situations in the UK, we will generally be referring to simple or continuous joints. The choice between first and second order analysis should be based on the flexibility of the structure and in particular, the extent to which ignoring its second order effects might lead to an unsafe approach. So clause 5.2 is about global analysis and the subpart 5.2.1 is about the effects of deformed geometry on the structure. So we need to check if second order effects increase the action effects significantly or modify the structural behaviour. A first order analysis may be used if the following criteria is met. So if alpha crit is greater than or equal to 10 for an elastic analysis or if alpha crit is greater than or equal to 15 for a plastic analysis. So if those conditions are met, then we can ignore the effects of deformed geometry. The stricter limit for plastic analysis is due to, is due to loss of stiffness associated with material yielding and alpha crit is the ratio of the level of load on our frame and the elastic critical buckling load. So as I said in the previous slide, Alpha crit is the ratio of the, the design loading on the structure, so FED and the elastic critical buckling load, FCR. In BS5950, this, this would have been lambda crit, and if the loading FED is close to FCR, then there is instability, but if the loading FED is much less than FCR, then we have little instability. For regular multi story frames, alpha crit needs to be calculated for each story but it is the base story that will normally control. For portal frames with shallow roof slopes less than 26 degrees, 
and theme and column plane frames, then we can use this expression to work out alpha crit. So here is a list showing the definitions of the terms used in that expression. So HED is the horizontal reaction at the bottom of the story. VED is the total vertical load at the bottom of the story. Small delta H, ED is the horizontal deflection at the top of the story under consideration relative to the bottom of the story with all horizontal loads applied to the structure. And H is the story height. We need to check to see if second order effects are significant. So we have P large delta effects and those are related to deformed geometry, so the movement of nodes. So the loads applied will not be where they were modelled. Due to horizontal loads or imperfections, the vertical loads will be eccentric and will cause further deformations. We also have P small delta effects, and those are related to the curbing of the members, which increases bending. But in the UK, we will account for P small delta effects in the member checks. If alpha crit falls between 3 and 10, then we can apply this amplifier to all of the lateral loads on the structure. So this is the amplifier, and it's 1 over 1 minus 1 over alpha crit. And if we multiply this expression by alpha crit, then it becomes alpha crit over alpha crit minus 1. And that's equivalent to k amp that you would have used in 5950. So here is a summary table. So for values of alpha crit larger than 10, then we don't need to worry about second order effects, and we can use first order analysis. And the, li the limit value 10 is the same used in 5950. For values of alpha crit between 3 and 10, we can apply the amplification factor. And for values of alpha crit less than 3, then we need to perform a second order analysis. And this slide shows the differences between Eurocode 3 and BS5950. So alpha crit, which I've been talking about, well that would have been, well you would have used um, lambda crit in BS5950. And both codes use an ampli use amplica amplification factors, so you would have been familiar with K amp and BS5950, so the concept is not that different overall. So I've finished covering the different types of analysis, I'm now going to talk about imperfections. There are three types of imperfections that we are interested in. Frames, they will always be out of plumb by a small amount, which means any vertical loads applied will become eccentric will be eccentric to the bases. Bracing, so that includes trusses, will never be perfect and can have initial bow imperfection. And members, they will never be perfectly straight and will also have initial bow imperfections. However, the member resistance checks allow for initial imperfections, so you shouldn't worry too much about those. So we know that imperfections will appear in almost every load case. We can use equivalent horizontal forces and the equivalent horizontal forces are relatively familiar because they are based on 1 over 200 of the factored vertical load with reduction factors. So I'll go into detail about these equivalent horizontal for forces in the next few slides. We can represent initial sway imperfections by using equivalent horizontal forces. On the left is a frame which is out of plumb, so that would be quite difficult to analyse since all of the node positions would have changed. On the right, we can use equivalent horizontal forces to model the frame as if it was perfectly vertical, so this, was this would definitely be easier. And these equivalent horizontal forces are quite similar to the notional horizontal forces that you would have used in BS5950. So again, here is another diagram showing that rather than model this portal frame, portal frame out of plumb, we can simply model, model our frame as vertical with addition of equivalent horizontal forces. Here's how we calculate the equivalent horizontal forces. So they are equal to the sway imperfection phi times the vertical forces. And here we have the equation to work out phi. And phi is equal to phi naught times alpha h and alpha m. It says in, in the euro codes that phi naught is 1 in 200, and that's equivalent to half a percent, so that's the same as we would have used in BS5950. The next slide will tell you how to get these alpha factors. So these are the alpha factors, and alpha h is a reduction factor for height, and this is the equation we use to work it out. So we need h, and h is the height of the structure in metres. Alpha m is a reduction factor for columns, so we have this equation, and you'll, you'll need to know m, and m is the number of columns contributing to the effect on the bracing system. So here's a brief summary 
of some differences using BS5950 and Eurocode 3. So in BS5950 we would have used notional horizontal forces and they would only appear in the gravity load combination. In Eurocode 3 we have equivalent horizontal forces and the difference is that they appear in almost every load combination so they are additive to the wind load. So here's a summary of the steps that we need to go through to assess the stability of a frame. So first of all, we need to model the frame and then put on all the loads, and that includes the equivalent horizontal forces. After putting on the loads, then we can work out alpha crit using the formula, and therefore determine if, a sec if second order effects are significant. If the effects are significant, then we can use the amplifier. So now that I've gone through the theory, I'm going to go through an example from the XSD website. So this is an example that we're going to calculate alpha crit for, so for this simple structure. So by calculating alpha crit, we can determine whether or not the second order effects will need to be taken into account or if they can be neglected. So each story is 3.5 meters high and width of each bay is 6 meters. So overall, the overall width of the building is 12 meters. Here is the ULS combination load is here the ULS combination load sorry is shown at the top. And the loads and the members are shown in the diagram and we need to use the value of the ULS combination to determine alpha crit. So here that's 38.9 kilonewtons per meter and you should try and remember that value. So first of all alpha m. So to work that out we need to know m and that's the number of columns contributing to the effect on the bracing system. So m is 3. So putting in the values alpha m works out as 0.816. Next we need to work out alpha, alpha h. So to work out that, we need to know h, and that is the height of the structure meters, so h is 7 meters. To put it in the values, alpha h works out at 0.756. Now thi naught is equal to 1 over 200, and thi equals thi naught times alpha h times alpha m. So put it in the values that we have worked out, then thi is equal to 1 over 324. And now that we know thi, we can work out the EHFs. So thi times the force times the length in which it acts. So 1 over 324 times 38.9, which I told you to remember, and the length, which is 12 metres. So the EHFs are both 1.44 kilonewtons. So we worked out the EHFs, that they were um, 1.44 kilonewtons, so we can add those to the diagram. And first of all, we're going to work out the value of alpha crit for the case where the column has rigid column bases. So this is, this, um, is a diagram showing what the deflected shape would look like. And at the bottom, the deflections have been worked out using a computer program. And we know that the height of the story is 3.5 meters. The sum of the vertical loads is 466.8 kilonewtons. And the sum of the EHFs is 1.44 kilonewtons. So we can use those values to work out alpha crit, and that works out as 28.41 for the first story and 34.83 for the second story, and they are both larger than 10, so we know the second order effects may be neglected. Next, we're going to work out the value of alpha crit for the case where the column has pinned column bases. So this is a diagram showing what the deflected shape would look like, and at the, bo and at the bottom, the deflections have been worked out using a computer program. We know the height of one story is 3.5 meters, the sum of the vertical loads is 466.8 kilonewtons, and the sum of the EHS is 1.44 kilonewtons. So we can use these values to work out alpha crit, and that works out as 23.99 for the first story, and 8.06 for the second story. So 8.06 is less than 10, therefore we will have to consider second order effects. So for the pinned column based scenario, we need to consider second order effects. And second order sway effects may be calculated by increasing the horizontal loads on the EHS by using the amplification factor. So here the amplification factor works out as 1.172, so we would need to apply that factor to all of the lateral loads. So this is the end of our session on structural analysis, and remember that you can always refer back to this A-lecture or use the complimentary summary handout for quick reference as it contains all of the key points. Thank you.